Hey guys, Peter here from Epic Family Road Trip. We get uh, requests from time to time on uh, different equipment we're using and other topics. And we thought it would be fun to do some educational videos. You know, we realized we've been living off-grid and overland lifestyle full-time now for eight years. We're coming into, or we just started our ninth year. So um, we have a, a lot of experience in the field. We've gone through all kinds of different uh, setups and equipment and vehicles. So we think it, it would be helpful to share what we know. Please let us know in the comments if you like these kind of videos and uh, if you have any specific topics you want us to talk about. But today we're going to talk about essentials that you need for the overland lifestyle. And we've broken it down into three categories. So the three categories that we're going to talk about today are one, food, water, shelter. Number two, comfort, hygiene, and safety. The third category would be recovery and communication. Before we get started and in full disclosure, we want to let you know that no one is paying us to create this video. Um, most of these products we bought ourselves. Some of the products were given to us by various brands to use in the field and to provide feedback to them. And so you'll see that anything we're showing you are products that we field tested heavily and that we love. We've used them and they work. We're very careful about making sure that we don't just promote something because someone paid us to do so. Uh, and you probably noticed that on our channel. We don't really do that. We use products and if we don't like them, they, they end up disappearing. And if we do like them, we end up using them for a long period of time. And you'll notice that a lot of these products that we're using today have been heavily used in the field. So they're not clean. They're not, uh, they might be bent up a bit and uh, but they're not showroom items they are used in everyday life out here on the trail. So we're talking about food, water, shelter and a very essential item if you're out for a long period of time is a good table. So we've got this table that we bought um, about a year ago and we love it. Ease of setup and it's just the right height and it's got some good surface area and then it collapses into a pretty small bag. Now, with everything in overlanding, weight and size are of the essence, as well as functionality. And sometimes when you go to a smaller size, lighter weight, you give up some functionality. It all depends on your rig, how many people you're traveling with, and how much space you have. So this is what we use for a table. And it's uh, by, the brand is Eureka. It's called a Eureka Camp Table. We'll put uh, all this information in the description below. So it's an aluminum lightweight frame here which slides out pretty easy. And you just pull out the, the legs. Clip it together. The second part is the table top and it folds up conveniently like this. And then to put it together you just set it down on the table and fold it out. And then there's a clip on each corner. Next I'll talk about chairs. I'm going to move the table out of the way here and uh, show you a couple of chair options. Just like with the table, when it comes to chairs, you can either go super lightweight and small and compact, or you can go a little bit bigger and have more comfort. Again, it has to do with how much space you have in your vehicle. So when we started out, we went with uh, these little Helinox lightweight backpacking chairs because we had five people. And so, it, you know, it didn't, it wasn't a lot of weight in the vehicle and it didn't take up a lot of space, but they're not designed for long-term comfort. Now that we've been on the road for many, many years, comfort is more important to us. And if you're thinking about being out there for a long period of time, comfort obviously becomes more important. You'll have a better experience and you'll want to stay out there longer. So I'm going to show you two different chairs that we carry. This is a Eureka brand as well. So the same brand as the table and it's a, a foldable chair. It didn't take too long to set up and it's quite comfortable chair. Um, it's bigger than some of the other backpacking chairs we carried in the beginning. So, yeah, I mean, this, this is a great option just because it does have a certain element of comfort, but also it's very lightweight and it packs up very small. I'll show you something a little bulkier and definitely very, very comfortable. 
So this is uh, a more bulky chair we picked up fairly recently. It's by a company called GCI Outdoor. Uh, we don't know too much about the company. This is the only product we have. We bought it at uh, REI and it's reasonably priced. As you can tell, it was a very simple setup and uh, it's all one piece, so you're not clicking together pieces. And this one happens to have uh, a rocker on it, so yeah, nice. We like sitting by the fire, maybe playing a bit of guitar. This is the kind of chair you can sit in for a couple hours as a, the stars come out. When it comes to comfort and then portability, you know, if you go for the ultralight and small, you usually give up a little bit of luxury and comfort. You go a little bit bigger if you have the space and you get the ease of setup and takedown, but also a very, very comfortable chair. All right, now that we have a table and chairs set up, it's time to talk about food and water. Let's begin with water. As you know, if you're out in the backcountry for a long period of time, especially in the desert, you're going to go through your water pretty quickly and you're going to need to be able to filter water from a static source like a lake or river or stream. Um, what our main go-to is the Lifesaver Jerry Can. Not only does it hold your water for you, but it filters it as you need it. So the way you use the Jerry Can is you open this side here and that's where you fill the water. So you'll dip it into the water source until it's full and then thread this back on. And this is actually a convenient pump. It allows you to pressurize the tank. And these are not just standard Jerry Cans, of course they're reinforced with all kinds of ribbing and so on so that it can handle the pressure and you pump you know 10 or 12 pumps and then you have a spigot on this end which you turn and the water comes out purified the filter inside here goes right the length of the jerry can and you can go to their website and read up about everything that it filters out of water we do also have a product from lifesaver which is more like a straw where you dip it into the river and you pump into a container so both are very very handy and then thirdly there's a product called aqua tabs and if you're still worried about your water source you just put one of these tabs into a jug of water and it'll help to purify it as well all right now let's talk about food preparation uh, we'll start with the aloe box this is a really handy item we bought our first aloe box actually back in 2017 i believe and uh, took it all with us all through New Zealand and since then it's been on every trip we've done so, and it's still going strong it's in perfect shape this aloe box model is bear proof and all of them are dust and waterproof so they're very handy to have very tough they can handle any condition you put them through but we use this to store uh, dry food goods spices all that kind of stuff but also we keep our stove and utensils in these boxes. We're going to talk about how to cook a meal. With overlanding it's all about having options. Most of the time we like to be outside. That's why we do this. Uh, we cook over a fire. But today I'm talking about an alternative method because there are a lot of times where you get into bad weather. You can't get a fire going. It's too cold or it's raining and you want to be able to cook a meal inside or at least under shelter. So what we use is this Jetboil stove. It's a very handy two burner stove. As you can see it's very small and you can use the small propane tanks which are small and easy to carry as well. And then the, the system also has its own pan system that fits right onto the burners. So this is a great saucepan or soup. Um, you can make any meal in here really. And then underneath it is a frying pan. So the whole system fits really compact. The stove fits into the pot which sits in the pan and then there's a bag for it all. So check that out. There's other options. We also have a partner, two burner partner stove on a slide, but that's in a different vehicle. So if you're looking for something that's portable, over the years, because our rig has changed from time to time, sometimes also our family size goes from five to two. If Carol and I are going on a, you know, an empty nester trip and it's just the two of us, we want to be able to just put what we need into the vehicle and go. So that's why these portable options were very convenient for us. If you have a built-in stove and fridge and all that kind of stuff like we had in Vandy for many years, that's great too. So for utensils, uh, a company called GSI Outdoors, you can pick these up online or at REI in the States or MEC in Canada. And uh, we've used these for many, many years and they're super convenient. 
and they have everything you need from spatulas, you know, ladles, there's a brush, knives. We put in all kinds of things like uh, seasonings and bouillon, salt and pepper shakers, and then of course all your cutlery, um, even a small cutting board. So that's what we use and uh, we're able to make all kinds of meals with that when in the backcountry. So on top of using the two burner jet boil stove, we also use these. We have both the Sumo, which is a little bit bigger, and this one's called the Jet Boil Zip. And these are great, a great way to heat up water really quickly, make a coffee, whatever. But if you've watched our channel for any amount of time, you've seen us using our Jet Boils a lot. So now let's talk about transporting and preserving food. As much as possible, we try to use dry goods, canned goods. Those things never go bad, really, so they're easy to, to carry with you. In terms of perishables, um, things that you have to keep cold, you can either go with a portable fridge option, and there's lots of those. Right now we have a National Luna fridge in our trailer, and that's great, and it runs off the battery system there. But depending on the trip uh, you're going on, another option is a cooler. The only downside to that is you've got to make sure there's enough ice in there. The high-end high, high -end coolers will keep ice for many, many days. You can keep cold drinks in there, but also things like vegetables and meat. Another reason to spend some extra money in buying a good quality cooler is the fact that some of these are bear proof. And if you're spending a lot of time in bear country or way out in the back country, keeping the scent of food down to a minimum is a very important consideration. So this category is food, water, shelter. We've talked about the water. Um, we talked about storing and preparing food. And just as a side note, if you want us to delve deeper into any of these topics or items that we've been showing you, make sure you leave a comment below and we'll try to get that done for you. Now let's talk about shelter. So our vehicle is a Jeep and so that becomes our shelter. That's our tent. This is an extended JXL. And if you want um, details about this entire build, we will link another video here that we did a thorough walkthrough of the vehicle. But right now we're talking about sleeping arrangements. So basically what you need is a portable pillow, a sleeping mat that can be tucked away, and a good quality sleeping bag. When you're talking about shelter, the important thing is keeping yourself out of the elements. That's where you get into trouble. So keeping yourself out of rain, cold, wind, snow, all of the natural elements. So right now our shelter is our vehicle. Whether you're in a truck, a van, a rooftop tent, it doesn't matter, even a ground tent, you, you need to consider how am I gonna keep myself dry, comfortable, and warm. So we've talked about having a good pillow, mattress, and a sleeping bag. One of the conveniences of the JXL Jeep setup is that we have a goose gear platform, so we have a very comfortable bed to lay on, and then the Jeep itself forms hard walls. With the JXL, there's a pop-up tent camper, which we use to stand up and walk around, but it's also designed to sleep up there if you're so inclined. Typically, we like to sleep in the bottom, and it's a very, very comfortable, secure uh, place to spend the night. When it comes to below freezing nights, we have a heater, a Webasto heater that's built in, and we can just set the thermostat and it'll kick in uh, before things get too cold in there. Um, that pretty much takes care of everything. At this point with that gear, we're having a very, very comfortable night's sleep and a place to take shelter if weather gets really bad outside. Over the years, we've used rooftop tents, which are great. Um, over long periods of time and if you're stuck in an area where it's uh, heavy rain you can run into some issues of course um, but in general if you're going out on a weekend or going out for a week or two rooftop tending is is a great way to go you pop up your shelter when you need it and you just pull it down when you're done with it we now have our Ross Monster truck, which is incredible. That gives us the comfort we need for long distances and you know hard walls, sides, and everything. It's like having a home on a four-wheel drive chassis, so that's really cool. But just always know that shelter is a very, very important consideration for surviving and being in the backcountry for long periods of time. All right, now we're gonna talk about comfort, hygiene, and safety. Let's start with the number two business. Um, everyone asks about this and we can we're gonna do a, an entire video on several options that we've tried over the years but this is the one for portability and the one we use most in the Jeep 
and it's called a thunder box. As you can see, it collapses very small. It's light and doesn't take up much space and it's easy to set up. So you just pull it apart like this, make it into a square and then the, the top comes over and you can close it like that. So it's a very comfortable toilet to use and uh, there's a couple of things. If you're far away from a water source, you've got to stay a couple hundred feet from any water source. Then you can just simply dig a hole and we have this folding shovel that sits with it. Um, it's very easy to use and uh, you just put it together like that and with this you dig a hole and keep the the soil that you dug out to the side then you set up your thunder box on top of that hole and away you go when you're done your business you take the shovel fill it back in and it's gone but they also supply biodegradable bags and um, depending on your situation where you are you can put one of these bags they fit nicely into there and when you're done, you can tie it together and bury it because these bags eventually disappear completely and uh, everything becomes part of the soil. If you're not camping in a place all by yourself like this where you can just set it up in a little dip or behind a bush or a cactus, then we do have a privacy awning off the side of the Jeep which we'll show you when we talk about the shower situation. Lastly, toilet paper is very important stuff. We, over the years, learned to always store it in a Ziploc bag because moisture ruins it and uh, you wanna keep this stuff in good shape. And then you'll see in here, there's a company called Shower Pouch. And we'll talk about them as well when we're talking about showering. But they make these tiny little uh, hand sanitizers that fit into this bag and uh, And with all this, I mean, you're good to go. Let's take a minute and talk about safety in the backcountry. It's a very important consideration. Well, you see in the background here, we have these custom molly panels made and we have some first aid kits throughout the vehicle. Most of these are grab and go. They're on the Velcro. You just rip them off and go. This is a small one for, you know, minor cuts, bruises, scratches, things of that nature but it's very handy and easily accessible from the back. We also have on the back of the passenger seat, which is accessible from the side and the front, another first aid kit, which is for minor cuts, bruises, and things like that. And then we also have a trauma kit, which would have splints for a broken limb, tourniquets, uh, stop bleeds for major puncture wounds, and things like that. So it's good to have quality first aid equipment with you, but equally important is knowing where everything is and how to use it in an emergency situation. Another safety item is a fire extinguisher. You should have a good one, at least one. We have two here. One is a standard ABC uh, fire extinguisher. The, the deal with those is they need to be recharged from time to time, but you can take a look at the uh, gauge and see where they are. Make sure you update those because you want them to be fully charged when you need them. Another one is a fairly new product. And we have it at the back because we do most of our cooking back here and we also have batteries back here so um, just make sure they're easily accessible but this one can just be yanked off and it's called the element fire extinguisher check them out thankfully we haven't had to use them but they're very easy to use you just twist take the cap off light it and it creates a type of smoke that smothers almost every kind of fire including uh, lithium fire so these are not that expensive, easy to use, and uh, don't take up a lot of space. A couple of things that come in handy if and when you need them. A good pocket knife. I have one I just pulled out of my pocket here. Um, you never know when you're going to need a good knife and you don't want to have to go around looking for one. If you have to cut a seat belt or um, just a, a million different uses, make sure you have a pocket knife. Another thing most of us carry is a good simple Bic lighter. And if you need to create warmth and shelter or get a fire going, these are great. The nice thing about them, even if they run out of the gas, you can still use the spark to uh, get some tinder going. Headlamps are good to have. We have the Epic Family Road Trip headlamp. We'll put the link below. That one is very reliable and has all kinds of different light patterns and is easily rechargeable with a USB-C plug. And then just some area lighting for your camp or if you need it to do some repairs at night or things like that. And then lastly, 
uh, one of the best things to have is a Leatherman multi-tool that will get you out of all kinds of difficult situations. Another great item that we never go without is some kind of a bag that hangs on the back. We've used uh, the brand Trash Roo in the past. This one is made by a company called Northbound Expeditions. We'll make sure to put links below for you. But uh, this one has gone through all kinds of weather and UV from the sun and it's still going strong. I think we've this has been on here for about three, three years. And uh, typically we use these for throwing trash in. We'll bag up our trash, you know, pack it in, pack it out. Uh, we abide by that rule, but also if we see trash in a camp, we'll, we'll pick it up and bag it out of here and uh, make sure we keep campgrounds nice and clean. But this keeps it outside of the vehicle if there's any smell to it or anything like that. It's, it's outside of the vehicle and it's easily accessible. Very handy. This is also where we keep our Thunderbox toilet and things like that. So not only does it have the main pouch, but there's also all kinds of pockets on it which come in very handy. There's a, a screen pocket on either side. I mean, in one of them we just keep a roll of, of trash bags. Um, we could put uh, motor oil in there or spray cans. Just uh, unlimited usage, anything you want you don't want to have inside your vehicle can be stored back here. So this is called the shower cube made by Easy On and it is a handy little thing to have. This is where we take our showers and like I mentioned earlier, if you're in an area where you've got neighbors within view and you don't want to set up your toilet, you know, out in the middle of the open, then you can set it up here and this gives you the privacy you're looking for. As you can see, it's very easy to set up and just as easy to take down. So let's go take a look at the shower system that we use. This is called the Geyser Shower. It is amazing and it has been a game changer for us just because of its convenience and size. It's very easy to use and you don't need a lot of equipment. It's a self-contained unit. There's two ways to use it. One, you can fill up the water canister with room temperature water and then plug it into any 12 volt in your vehicle and it'll heat up or you can just fill up the canister, two parts room temperature water and one part heated water. What we do is we boil it in the jet boil and throw it in there and it makes a perfect temperature of water. Feel it, of course, by hand to make sure it's a comfortable temperature for taking a shower. Then you put the lid on, flick that switch, turn on the pump and it'll pump water out to one of these sponges. And we've got a replacement scrub sponge here and each person uses their own and it's good for many many usages before it needs to be replaced. There's a little knob here and that's important. This knob regulates the flow of water so when you're just when you're washing you keep it very low and it gives you enough water mixed with soap to get a really good lather on your whole body and then you can turn it up a bit and fresh water will come out and you can completely rinse and it's amazing. I mean, with such a small amount of water, you can take a very long shower. In fact, I usually have water left in the canister when I'm done. And Carol and Caroline love it. Even though they have lots of long uh, hair, they can really turn up the flow and wash their hair with it. So something to look into if you're looking for a really compact, easy to use shower solution when on the road. And then for between showers, for hygiene, there's a thing called the shower pouch, and they make these really good shower wipes. This is a medium size, they have larger ones, and it's a full body wipe, so that gets you by, um, you know, if you're out on a dusty trail or you just want to freshen up, check out shower pouch. They're available online and at most uh, outdoor retailers. So as you can see, with that toilet set up, and this shower set up, and then that side awning, which gives you privacy. It's really easy to have good hygiene when on the road. It's really important for your own comfort as well and allows you to stay out in the backcountry for longer periods of time. So lastly, we want to talk about recovery and communication. We're not going to go into a lot of depth. We will definitely make a, another full video about these topics, but um, some of the basics you need to have a good set of traction boards. We use Max Tracks. 
they're tested and proven and they've got us out of some very difficult situations over the years. You'll see that this is mounted on the spare tire, which is very handy and easily accessible. These mounts are available at equippedone.com. Um, so check that out if you're looking for a place to mount your your max tracks. Of course, if you can get one, a good winch is gonna definitely help you. We have a Warren Xeon 10 S on both Jeeps, and they've also got us out of very difficult situations, being stuck in mud or snow. Along with that, we have a recovery bag with things like soft shackles and static ropes and uh, tow ropes and things like that. But we'll do a separate video on that because it's a very extensive topic. Now let's talk about shovels and some other items that you should have with you to get yourself unstuck. This is a, a new item in our list. We actually haven't used it much, but um, a good friend of ours, Chad from Living the Van Life, he gets out in the back country with his van all the time. And he was talking specifically about desert soil. We're, and we're in the desert right now. And uh, this becomes a indispensable tool for hacking out um, some of this hard ground where a shovel just wouldn't cut it. So just uh, we picked this up at, at a local hardware store and uh, who knows if we have to use it you'll definitely see it on our videos. Another important item is a shovel. Now there's some very expensive fancy shovels on the market but all you really need is just a basic shovel. We have the AEV tire carrier and it conveniently has a shovel holder. And you just give it a twist and pull it out. And so here we have it, just a basic, it's a Craftsman, you can see the label still on it. These are brand new uh, because we had worn out our other ones. We find ourselves uh, needing to clear trails from time to time or do trail maintenance just to be able to get by. Often it's branches coming in. So a good handsaw, we use the Boreal Saw by Agua Canyon. That's a great handsaw and it really works for, we've cut, you know, some fairly large pieces of wood out of the way. Um, we have a hatchet with us. We have an ax mounted on our roof rack and we usually carry an electric chainsaw with us as well. The nice thing about having the Red Arc and the Battleborn batteries in the Jeep is we have a lot of power. We have a solar panel on top so we can charge up those batteries. If you don't have that then unless you have multiple batteries you might want to have a, a regular gas powered chainsaw but all of those items really come in handy out on the trail. All right another consideration is you need the ability to inflate and deflate your tires on the trail or getting on the trail and then if you get back on pavement you want to inflate them so a couple of things we have under our seat we have an ARB dual compressor which is a very powerful compressor you can see the line um, we just keep this attached at all times and to this we hook up what's called a speed flate and it actually goes to all four tires at once and you can use it to deflate the tires equally or to inflate them all at once and it saves a lot of time in the past uh, we used a small portable compressor called a vi air and it's it's handy if you're just going on a trip and you want to get it out of your vehicle but it was quite slow and if you want something as powerful as the compressor that's tucked under the seat here you have a much you need to get a much bigger unit so but that's just an option that we've used in the past um, we also have these units called a sten deflator which um, are very handy as well and they're set to 18 pounds so they will turn off they'll stop deflating when your tires reach 18 pounds of pressure which is usually a pretty good um, PSI to deflate to when you're getting on a rough trail. And then when you get back to pavement, you want to get them back up to highway pressures like 37 PSI or something along those lines. You hook the speed flate up to all four tires, turn on the uh, compressor and it'll, it'll do that. You just monitor the PSI on the gauge. All right, lastly, let's talk about communications. So we use a couple of things. One, we have GMRS midland radios in our vehicles but that mostly allows us to communicate between our vehicles not necessarily to the outside world you could use a cb if you want um, and then there's also a ham radio option which is something we're learning more about and we want to get licensed on that and start using that a lot more but now let's talk about satellite comms if you are in the backcountry you would have a cell cell phone with you but Typically, you're going to run out of cell service at some point, and so that's where 
different satellite options come into play. Uh, we use Zolio. Um, these are great. They're, they have connectivity all over North America and around the world. In fact, I think these have the, the most connectivity around the world. You can simply hit the SOS button or it connects to an app on your phone and you can text just like a regular text. You can send it to someone's email address or to their cell phone. Um, so that's great for getting messages out, but also in the case of an uh, emergency, the Zolio network is managed by Global Rescue. And we've worked with Global Rescue. They're an amazing company. We have our family protected by a Global Rescue package, which um, we highly recommend as part of getting proper communications. Also, it would make sense to get a Global Rescue account. What happens when you push that button, Global Rescue will answer and they will be able to come and get you or give you the advice you need or direct you in the right direction. But the beauty is if you're way in the backcountry and you're immobilized somehow, they will actually come out and rescue you. Another option is the Garmin. We have the Garmin inReach. Um, we have so many different options because we sometimes share them between vehicles or the boys will go off on one of the bikes by themselves and they'll take one of these units and so on. So um, get as many as you need depending on what you're doing, but at a very minimum have one device with you at all times in the backcountry. So that's a wrap for now. I hope you found this video informative and I hope it gave you some good ideas of some of the basic gear that you should take with you when going on an overlanding trip in the backcountry. We could do an entire video on pretty much each one of these items showing how we use them and what we like about them and, and dislike and so on. And maybe we will do that. If you're interested in having us dig deeper into any one of the items we talked about today, make sure to leave a comment and let us know. And if you have any other topic that you would like us to do a video about, we'd appreciate hearing from you. We think uh, this series will be fun and informative and educational. And we can't wait to share everything we've learned over the last eight years living off grid and on the road with each and every one of you. So in the meantime, get out there, have fun, and keep exploring.